Chapter 7, The Crisis Unfolds In a top-secret meeting, a decision was reached to intensively monitor cinemas, gyms, and cultural centers, places where people often gathered. Just two days after this decision, a devastating bomb exploded during a massive public gathering in Lahore. Nationwide strikes, protests, processions, and acts of vandalism erupted in response. Mr. Aga promptly convened another secret meeting and obtained government approval to temporarily ban all political gatherings. Additionally, he ordered stringent security measures for public gatherings. Just a few days earlier, a bomb had detonated in Karachi's bustling market, revealing that even crowded markets were not safe from attacks. As the emergency situation escalated, high-ranking officials, from heads of state to lower-level officers, descended upon Karachi to address the crisis. The public's discontent was growing as they perceived the government's response as inadequate. Some believed that the government was incapable of dealing with the situation, and this sentiment fueled further unrest. The wave of vandalism continued, and Mr. Aga expressed his concern to his officers, remarking that they had failed to anticipate the market explosion. They had focused on monitoring cinemas but had overlooked the markets. One senior officer requested permission to speak frankly, stating that their decision seemed to reach the saboteurs. Mr. Aga inquired about the officer's point. The officer explained that despite trusting his colleagues, it was evident that their decisions were somehow being leaked to the saboteurs. He noted that when they monitored cinemas, bombings occurred elsewhere. There was no direct correlation between their surveillance and the attacks. Inspector Ahmed disagreed, arguing that surveillance should deter attacks. However, the officer countered that the terrorists were strategic and always knew where there was no security. Mr. Aga intervened, calming the escalating tension among the officers. He emphasized the need for a coherent plan of action. He urged them to devise individual master plans within a day, which would be discussed collectively to form a grand master plan. This plan would guide their actions moving forward. Zishan was secretly listening to the proceedings of the secret meeting. As soon as the meeting was over, he hurriedly went to sleep in his room. He thought that these people were only holding meetings. If he somehow found out about the saboteurs, he would kill them. He was blown up by their bombs and he fell asleep thinking that tomorrow he would go out again in search of the saboteurs' base.